Hey guys, um, I'm going to re-upload this video because YouTube wasn't happy with the music that I used and they said they might give me a copyright strike unless I take it down. So what I've done is changed the music, I've changed all the audio pitches so it's better to hear and I've added three more creatures to the list. Okay? The British Isles are a handful of islands consisting of the Isle of Great Britain, the island of Ireland and a host of smaller islands in that vicinity. Given its turbulent, ancient and bloody history, it is no wonder that the British Isles has the most highly documented and recorded history of creatures and myths in Europe. History describes events we know actually happened, whereas myths and legends, often repeated by generation, were never actually proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. When it comes to myths, magic and legends, the British Isles have it all. Ancient islands steeped in ancient myths, fables, legends and history. In this list, we take a look at the top 22 mythological creatures in the British Isles. Blue Cap Blue Caps inhabited mines and helped miners locate riches. They would appear as small blue flames or a humanoid gnome with blue hair. Blue caps would often illuminate the tunnels and were mostly seen around the areas of Scotland. They also forewarned the miners of any dangers that lied ahead and tried to prevent any kind of danger. As a result, miners would treat the blue caps with great respect and gave the blue caps rewards and treats for their effort. The Red Cap. The Red Cap, also known as a Powery is a type of malevolent, murderous creature found in British folklore. It is said many of them dwell in ruined, abandoned castles and dungeons, and murder travellers who stray into their domain. Redcaps usually take the form of short, old men with large mouths. The name Redcap comes from them drenching their hat in human blood. Redcaps constantly made strange sounds which resembled the sound of beating flax. When this sound grew especially loud, it was a portent of death or misfortune. The only way to escape one was to quote a passage from the Bible. Quotations from the Bible cause intense pain to the redcap, making it flee. The Selkie. Selkies are legendary creatures from Irish, Scottish, and Icelandic folklore. Generally, they are imagined as seals that can transform into humans, usually beautiful women. It's thought that they transform by removing their seal skins and return to their seal form by putting the skin back on. The majority of tales about Selkies are romantic tragedies about lonely fishermen stealing the seal skin of a selkie while they are in human form, forcing them to come home with them to become their wife. The couple then have children, and in some versions, these children have webbed hands or other abnormalities. All the while, the selkie continues to search for her skin as she cannot return to the sea without it. Once found, the woman will return to the sea, leaving the man desolate. However, in some cases, the man is completely unaware of the woman's true nature, that they are Selkie. The Azray. In English folklore, an Azray is a type of aquatic fairy, similar in some ways to mermaids and sirens. Some sources describe them as timid and shy, standing only between two and four feet tall, while others depict them as tall and lithe. They are said to look like beautiful young maidens, sometimes as young as children, while actually being hundreds of years old. If an Azrae is seen by a man, her beauty is so great that, according to folklore, the man will instantly wish to capture her. The Azrae are as deathly afraid of capture as they are of the sun, for if captured, or if even a single ray of sunlight touches them, it is said that they die and turn into a pool of water. The tale told of one fisherman who caught an Azrae claims that the touch of her skin was so cold that where the Azrae touched his arm while pleading for her freedom and her life, 
the flesh has never been warm since. Their inability to survive daylight is similar to that of the Scottish Foth. Nakalavi. Until fairly recently, the Nakalavi was extremely feared and, like many other creatures of Arcadian folklore, it was generally thought unsafe to mention the monster's name for fear of attracting his attention. Nakalavi is a Scottish folklore myth creature that lived in the sea, but ventured on land to feast upon livestock and humans, destroying their crops with its poisonous breath. It had transparent skin with black blood seen coursing through its veins and muscles. The Nakalavi has an aversion to running water and those who are chased by him have only to cross a stream to be rid of him. Some reports claim that he simply is a very large head on two small arms with all of the other characteristics mentioned. Joint Eater This nasty little creature of Irish tales known as the Joint Eater doesn't actually eat joints. This bizarre classification of fairy is known to eat some of its victims' food. When a person falls asleep by a stream, the joint eater will take the form of a newt and crawl down the victim's throat to snack out on the victim's previous meal. In one tale, it's said that you must devour salted meat in order to get the thing out of your throat. The salt is said to make the creature thirsty and leave to take a drink. The Bogart A Bogart is a creature in English folklore known for its relentless mischief. It is part of a collection of bugbear-type spirits, which include bogles, boogies, and boogeymen. It is also considered to be related to brownies, but is differentiated for being less helpful than a brownie and more malicious than a boogie. It is said that their appearance resembles a gnome. They are rarely seen, but make themselves known by minor mishaps and persistent noises after dark. Bogaries are clumsy creatures and prefer cluttered, semi-dark areas to hide in. They will serve themselves a nuisance to the homestead, with such acts as causing milk to go sour, disrupting sleep, especially those of babies, stealing, frightening pets, leaving taps running, and more. They are considered very difficult to be rid of, especially if named. Once an infestation is bad enough, there is no known method of appeasing or reasoning with it. Homeowners will be forced to act in a manner more annoying than the Bogart to drive it off. If that does not work, the lodgers are advised to move house as swiftly as possible so that the Bogart does not hear of the plans and hitch a ride. The Knocker. A knocker was a British spirit of the underground, which is thought to have originated in Wales and branched out to other areas such as Cornwall. According to Cornish folklore, the knocker was the helpful spirit of a previous fatality in the tin mines. A knocker is about two feet high, has a disproportionately large head, long beard, and weathered, wrinkled skin. Their long arms almost touch the ground, and they imitate the miner's clothes and dress, and carry such things as pickaxes and lamps. Miners knew the knockers well, but opinions on their intentions differed. Some believed the knocking on the cave walls, caused by knockers, were attempts to break down the walls. Others thought that the knocks were directions on where to dig, and others still thought that the knocks were warnings of an impending collapse. Knockers were said to be mischievous at their best. They hid tools and took candles. At their worst, they set the tunnels on fire. The Brownie Brownies come from English and Scottish folklore. They are helpful household spirits, similar to elves. They appear to be small humans with wrinkled faces and short, curly brown hair. They are usually dressed in brown clothing, including a conical hat or hood. Most brownies are attached to a single house or farm, where they may reside for centuries. They are very protective of their homes and become upset when humans quarrel or do not treat their animals with kindness. Brownies are industrious but shy, and so only come out at night to do their work, which can include cleaning the house or barn, grinding grain, or 
churning butter. The householders would often leave them a bowl of fresh cream or porridge or a freshly baked loaf of bread as repayment for their helpfulness. It is important to never criticise their work as they are very easily insulted. Once a brownie is insulted, they will most likely undo everything they have done and abandon the household. Barghest, also known as Black Shuck, Guy Trash, or the Padfoot, the Barghest resembles a giant dog-like creature covered in shaggy black fur, long fangs, pointed piercing claws, and fiery red eyes. It's been reported around the northern English counties of Yorkshire, Durham, and Northumberland, and is said to only appear at night in Pacific locations like fishing villages and churchyards. The Barghest drags a clanking chain behind it, sometimes wrapping its body in it. The sighting of the Barghest is a guaranteed portent of disaster and misfortune. While there have been many different mythological dogs witnessed in the British Isles, such as the Frey Barg of the Cusith, Galitron, and Gorigi, the Barghest appears the largest and most fearsome. Spring Hill Jack Spring Hill Jack is a creature of English folklore who terrorised people in the suburban London area during the mid to late 1800s. He was able to jump long distances and had terrifying features. His eyes seemed to glow like fire, sometimes with blue flames erupting, and he spat blue flames out of his mouth. He had long metallic claws that were used to claw at his victims. He was particularly fond of leaping out from behind buildings to terrorise his prey. Tall and thin, he wore an old skin cloak and would tend to jump out, terrorise people by spitting blue flames in their face and clawing at their clothes and then leap away over tall hedges. He had a habit of terrifying coachmen too, causing them to crash their coaches. Dullahan. The Dullahan is one of the most spectacular creatures in the Irish fairy realm and one which is particularly active in the more remote parts of counties Silgo and Down. The Dullahan is possessed of supernatural sight. By holding his severed head aloft, he can see the vast distances across the countryside even on the darkest night. Using this power, he can spy the house of a dying person no matter where it lies. Those who watch from their windows to see him pass are rewarded for their pains by having a basin of blood thrown in their faces or being struck blind in one eye. The Dullahan is usually mounted on a black steed which thunders through the night. He uses a human spine as a whip. The horse sends out sparks and flames from its nostrils as it charges forth. The origins of the Dullahan are not known for certain, but it's thought to be the embodiment of an ancient Celtic god, Crom Dub, or Black Crom. Crom Dub was worshipped by the prehistoric king Tigermas, who ruled in Ireland about 1500 years ago and who legitimised human sacrifice to hearth and idols. Being a fertility god, Crom Dub demanded human lives each year, the most favoured method of sacrifice being decapitation. The Kelpie. In mythology, the Kelpie is described as a strong and powerful horse. Its hide was supposedly black, but could be identified by its constantly dripping mane. Its skin was said to be like that of a seal, smooth but as cold as death when touched. The fable of the Kelpie varies by region. Other versions of the myth describe the Kelpie as green as glass, with a black mane and a tail that curves over its back like a wheel. The water horse is a common form of the Kelpie, said to lure humans, especially children, into the water to drown and eat them. The water horse would encourage children to ride on its back, and once its victims fell into its trap, the water horse's skin would become adhesive, and the horse would bear the children into the river, dragging them to the bottom of the water and devouring them. Banshee. A banshee is the spirit, usually a woman, that appears before an Irishman when a member of his family dies. Whatever the origins of the banshee, she supposedly appears in one of three guises. A young woman, a middle-aged matron, or a very ugly old woman. The banshee can also appear as a washerwoman, apparently washing the bloody clothes of those who are going to die. In this guise, she is called the Binai, washing woman. The banshee is also said to appear in a variety of animal forms, including a hooded crow, a stoat, hare, and a weasel. The Beast of Bodmin Moor The Beast of Bodmin Moor is a result of some 60 sightings of a giant black panther supposedly 3 to 5 feet long with white yellow eyes, 
combined with numerous reports of mutilated livestock. In 1995, the government ordered an investigation into the existence of such a beast. The report finally concluded that there was no verifiable evidence of a big cat on Bodmin Moor, although it was careful to state that there was no evidence against it either. Shortly after the report was published, the public were flabbergasted when a small boy found a leopard skull lying on the banks of the River Foy. Had it escaped from a nearby zoo? Was it the responsible party for the mutilations? The Natural History Museum soon found the leopard skull to have been imported into this country as part of a leopard skin rug. Although sightings were still reported with reasonable regularity, it wasn't until 1998 that an amateur video footage was released showing a black animal around three and a half feet long. The video, described by a curator of the Nukwe Zoo and a wildcat expert as the best evidence yet, proved that big cats do indeed roam Bodmin Moor. This raised many questions as to whether the animal was indeed computer-generated or a big cat that had escaped a zoo and was not reported because it had been imported illegally. Some believe the animal is a species of wild cat that became extinct in Britain more than a hundred years ago. Grindylow a Grindylow or Grundylow is a folkloric creature that originated from folk tales in the English counties of Yorkshire and Lancashire. They are said to be pale green creatures that live in the weed beds on the bottom of the lakes in Britain. Grindylows are said to grab little children with their long arms and drown them if they come too close to the water's edge. Grindylows have been seen as bogeymen used as a ploy to frighten children away from pools, marshes or ponds where they could drown. The Red Dragon of Wales Dragons have been the symbol of British kings since mythic times. The Mavagonian, the cultural epic of Wales, tells the story of the battle between the Red Dragon and an invading White Dragon for control of Britain. According to the tale, the pain traits of the fighting dragons caused women to miscarry and crops to fail. British King Lud consulted his wise brother to dig a pit in Dennis Emrys in Snowdonia and fill it with mead. When the dragons drank the mead and fell asleep, Lud imprisoned them. Throughout the centuries the dragons were released and continued to fight and it wasn't long until the Red Dragon triumphed. Over the next thousand years many British kings adorned battle flags with dragons. The legendary King Cadwallon of Gwynedd used the Red Dragon as his standard. The Will-O-Wisp The Will-O-The-Wisp has been recorded as flickering over marshy ground since at least the Middle Ages. The lights have also been incorporated into modern literature, for example Dracula, and have even had a children's television show named after them. The most commonly cited explanation for them is that they're the product of ignited marsh gas, most likely slowly leaking methane whose ignition is triggered by phosphine. Historical and contemporary accounts of these lights, however, often fly in the face of this explanation given that the lights are often seen to move and to not admit heat. However, historical and contemporary accounts of these lights often fly in the face of this explanation, given that the lights are often seen to move and to not emit heat. Will-o'-wisps were first sighted across the United Kingdom and Scotland, but have also been spotted in other countries as well, most notably Denmark, Germany and Sweden. There were many different names for them, such as treasure lights, corpse candles, and fairy lights. Pixie. Pixies are mythical creatures of English folklore considered to be particularly concentrated in the areas around Devon and Cornwall, suggesting some Celtic origin for the belief and name. Pixies are notorious pranksters. One of their favourite ways of messing with people is leading them off into the woods and leaving them lost for hours. Pranksters they may be, but not malevolent. They are known to help out a worth human in need. According to the myths, pixies were originally druids who resisted Christianity. They resisted the influences and the pixies grew smaller. Another myth tells us that they were a race of people who were not good enough to go to heaven, but nor were they bad enough to go to hell and so were doomed to walk the earth forever. 
Pixies are known to steal horses and make nocturnal trips around them all over the moors, and also like to trick humans such as throwing objects around the house. Mermaids. Mermaids are also an entrenched part of mythology in Britain. Historically, there has been a belief in part fish, part human creatures for thousands of years. Whilst there are several other sea creature deities, the mermaid in Britain is most likely also derived from Celtic legend. Interestingly enough, there has been an enormous amount of mermaid folklore passed down over many centuries. A mermaid sighting is believed to be a very bad omen storms, rough seas, possible shipwrecks, and deaths. Several legends also take mermaids from the sea to haunt rivers and pools, such as Mermaid's Pool below Kinder Downfall in Derbyshire, and Black Mere near Leek in Staffordshire. The Leprechaun a leprechaun is a small sprite that lives in farmhouses or wine cellars. Like brownies, they aid humans and accomplish small labors for them. They ask humans for supplies and furniture, and in return, they give objects that bring luck and fortune. Leprechauns are described as merry little fellows that dress in old-fashioned green clothes with buckled shoes. They are known as fairy cobblers as they make shoes for other elves. They never make a pair of shoes, they only make one. Popular belief is that a leprechaun possesses a treasure which a human can obtain if they succeed in capturing one, which is very difficult. Leprechauns are mainly found in Irish folklore, but do appear in other countries too. Nessie Nessie is a mysterious creature claimed to inhabit the Loch Ness Lake near Inverness, Scotland. The creature is often thought as female because of the female tone in its nickname. There are many reports of sightings and some people have even taken pictures they claim to be the monster, but none have been marked with conclusive evidence so far. The creature is now thought to be a carnivorous aquatic animal from the dinosaur era. Many researchers are against the theory and claim that the water is too cold for a cold-blooded dinosaur to live in, and that Locke simply does not have enough food to preserve it. Additionally, the dinosaur would have to surface often to breathe, and therefore it would have been seen more often. Some researchers say it's impossible for an animal that went extinct millions of years ago to live in a lake that dates back 10,000 years. But many people still believe stating that animals can adapt to different conditions throughout time.